Okay, so in today's math lesson, we started talking about volume. And a little twist on volume here, uh, we'll be talking also about changing the size of the cubes that we're using in finding volume, which is kind of interesting. So typically, your volume formula is going to be, not typically, it is, it's going to take your length times your width and multiply it by your height. We're talking about rectangular prisms here. I like to think of it as finding uh, volume as finding your base area. Okay, this is the amount of space in here. All right, so it's very similar to area. And then what we're doing here, we're finding out how many layers, it's kind of like slices of bread, how many layers I need of that particular area do I need to fill in my solid, okay, my three-dimensional three -dimensional, uh, solid. So what we need to do is to multiply those three values. So I have my nine inches. I have my one and one third inches, and I have my four and two thirds inches. We need to multiply all these out. So the first thing I'm going to do is turn everything into a fraction, because in order to multiply fractions, I need fractions. I'll do a nine over one. Uh, one and one third gives me three four thirds, and four and two thirds, that's 12, 13, 14 thirds right here. The good news about it is I can start reducing here. So I 3 goes into 3 once, 3 goes into 9 three times. And then I have two 3s over here. I can divide those by 3, and I get 1 and 1. So I have a 14 times 4 scenario here. And uh, so that's 16, 4, 5. So the volume equals 56 uh, inches cubed. Cubed meaning the amount of cubes I need to fill in. There they are. My little cubes to fill in this particular solid. Okay? And those cubes are all one inch by one inch by one inch, thus I need 56 of them, okay? But in this situation here, the cubes are a little smaller. We're not using one inch cubes. What if we take the cubes and we're using one third inch cubes? One third, well, that changes things a little bit. So if I'm using cubes and those cubes, the dimensions of those cubes are one third of an inch, one third of an inch, and one third of an inch, well, that means if I have nine inches worth, I'm going to need three such cubes to fill in each inch. So if I have 27 uh, cubes, that means I'm going to need 27 cubes going this way. Going this way, I'm going to need three cubes for this guy plus another. That gives me four cubes. And over here, three for each, that's 12. And 13, I have 14 cubes going up. Now, to find the total amount of cubes... Uh, thinking about it this way, I'm going to need to take 27 times 4. That gives me my base area of cubes, or the amount of cubes to fill in the floor of this thing, and then 14 layers of that. Okay, so if I start multiplying, I can do my 27 times 14 first. I have my 28, 8, 9, 10. There they are, 7 right here, and my 2 right here, 8, 7, 3. That gives me 378. And then I need to take my 378 and multiply that by the 4. That's the only number I have left. There's a 32, 28, 29, 30, 31. Then I have a 12, 13, 14, 15. So I have 1,000, 1,512 cubes. All right, which is kind of cool. Now, to come back over here for a minute, if my area is, uh, excuse me, my volume is 56 inches cubed, and I'm using cubes that are one-third by one-third by one-third, I need to find the volume of this cube, okay, to find out how many cubes fit into my 56 inches cubed. So if I take my one-third, I multiply it by my one-third and one by my one-third, 3 times 3 gives me 9, and then 9 times 3 gives me 27. I wind up with 1 over 27 inches cubed. So that's the volume of this little bugger. Okay, so the volume of that guy equals 1 27th inches cubed. Now, why is that important? Well, if the entire volume is 56 inches cubed, and each little bugger is 1 27th of an inch cubed, well, to find out how many 127ths I need, or how many cubes I need, to satisfy that 56 inches uh, cubed, well, I'm going to need to divide how many 127ths are in 56. So, it looks like this. So I'm going to take my 56, I'm going to divide it by my 1 over 27. In order to divide, 
I need to multiply by a reciprocal. So 56 times 27 over 1. Now, watch what happens here. This is pretty cool. So if I take my 56 and I multiply by 27, 6 times 7 gives me 42. 7 times 5 gives me 35. 36, 37, 38, 39. There's my 39. I drop that down, get rid of that guy, get rid of that guy. 2 times 6 gives me 12. 2 times 5 gives me 10 plus 1, 11. And if I add that up, watch what happens. I get a 2, 9 plus 2, 11. 2, 3, 4, uh, three, four 5. And a 1. Check that out. 1,512. 1,512. And those are my cubes. And there they are. Okay, kind of neat. Question C, how, how is the number of cubes related to the volume? Well, the number of cubes is related to the volume in that the volume of the cube uh, lets me know how many cubes or how many, uh, how many cubes I need to fill in the space. So how, many, how are the cubes related to the volume? Well, the volume and the cubes are very much related because the volume tells you how much space in the cube, or at least the volume of the cube, lets you know how many of those guys you need to fill in that space. So once you find out the amount of space a cube fills up, you then can find out how many cubes you need to fill in the entire space. Okay, so if the cube is taking up this much space and you need to fill this much space, well, you need to divide how many 127ths are in 56. Okay, so it's kind of neat. All right, a little twist on things a bit. All right, thanks so much, gang. Take care. Bye-bye.